This video is intended for those of you who just have a new Unity project and would like to have it on a source control so other people can collaborate with you or you can just save version for later on in case something goes wrong. So with this video, you're going to be learning how to set up your project, how to install Git. You're going to learn a couple of lines in Git, just enough to get you started and working by yourself on your project. And uh, that's pretty much it. So just let's jump into it. Cheers. Now, for those of you who I haven't seen in over one year and a half now, <laughs> first, apologies for that. Um, I'm currently developing a game on Twitch, so I'm live on Twitch every Saturday. If you'd like to tune in, you can check the link down below. It's also in my channel description now. Um, I'm live on Twitch and I'm developing this game. And um, the purpose of this game is actually you are dead, you're in the afterlife, and you're trying to climb your way back up. This is a survival game, so a top-down survival game. It's a little bit like V-Rising um, in my head right now, but it's, of course, in a very early development stage. The reason I'm bringing it up is because that's what I'm working on every Saturday on my Twitch channel. And if you'd like to tune in or just come and ask question, feel free to do so. So um, I'm at the point in the project where I need to put this under source control or version control, they call it now, because source control would imply only code, but version control implies code and data. Um, I just want to say before we go any further that all the information that I'm pulling today is actually from a ebook for best practices published by Unity. So it's roughly 51 pages of that information. The link for that is gonna be in the description down below, but I understand that you came here for a dummy version. So we're gonna do the dummy version right now. First step, step number one, we need to set up our Unity project. And um, setting up our Unity project is quite easy. I'm gonna do it quite fast. Edit project settings, we need to verify two things. The first thing is under source control, we have to make sure we have visible meta files. So ensure that this is on. And under editor, if you go for the asset serialization mode, force text. Um, version control, visible meta file. You need to have visible meta files so your source control uh, software, Git in this case, can view those files and include them to the source control. Why are meta files important? Meta file in Unity are the following. So for example, I have over here this artwork called Skull Vial. And every time that you include, in this case, this is a PNG file. Every time that you include that, Unity automatically creates a meta file. What is this meta file and what is the original? There is a big difference in between the two. The original is the graphic, the source graphic that you send it, and it never gets modified. But when you're in Unity, you might use this graphic for different purpose. In this case, this is a sprite to the text and UI, but I could also change that to put it on a default. I could change the ANISO level. I could change a couple of settings here. So the way I interact with this object in Unity is modified by how I import it. The import information. So for example, if I decide to switch the alpha source from grayscale, the information for that is actually in the meta file. Unity does that, so they never actually change your original graphic. So if you'd like to swap it again in the future, they're going to be reusing the original stuff to recreate the actual Unity object you're trying to have. Now, as far as the other setting is concerned, the editor asset mode, um, usually it's binary. You put it on text. So when there is a, a conflict, for example, in a the scene, there is a conflict. It says this prefab name was this. And now it became that. With force text, you can actually see that in the string and you could actually merge the conflict. You could actually deal with the conflict in Git. You can see what changed. If you're in binary, uh, the binary file is just going to be, hey, I'm different than the other one. There's a conflict. I don't exactly know why. So resolving the conflict is going to be a pain, but that is why we put that on force text. And that pretty much wraps it up for what you need to set up in Unity. But there are some best practices that I'd just quickly like to go over very quickly. Um, the first one is to be constant with your naming convention. So if you start your classes with capital with Pascal case, then keep it that way, right? If you decide to put underscore in between your assets, keep it that way so things are consistent across the board. Uh, this is not just a source control, but it's also within your code as well. Second thing, do not use spaces in your file name. Some systems are not going to like that. So just avoid doing that. Put underscores or just do uh, camel case. 
The third thing for best practice would be to separate what you're getting from a third party and your own asset and your own code. So for example, here I have Unity Chan, which uh, sits in, other, in, in a completely other folder outside of the thing that I've made for a project. The reason I'm doing that is so if one day I want to update this asset, I know exactly where things are and they're not intertwined with my own code. So I don't accidentally overwrite something or I don't accidentally, accidentally delete some of my own stuff. And the last step I can give you if you're using Git or oh, for force switch today we're using Git. Um, when you create empty folder, this is my project folder. If I am to create an empty folder, Git will not recognize it. So if I do status, it does not consider that the project has been modified. And that's because Git actually ignores empty folders. So if you're just going to be doing your folder structures and you're not going to put anything in there, um, just ensure that you create at least one file, for example, here. Now, when I do a git status, it does see my new folder. So it's going to be very important to create empty files in your empty folder if you want to make sure that those are source control. With that being said, we are pretty much done with the setup of the project. We're now going to go into the git part. Here's a bit of information about plastic SCM, which is not what we're going to be using today, but it's just worth mentioning that Plastic SCM is another source control uh, engine, you could say, that just got purchased by Unity recently. So if you're playing around the UI, if you're going on the Unity best practice, you're going to be seeing Plastic SCM at a couple of places. It's very cool. It's very great. Um, it's good, good stuff. The only problem is that um, they are going to run you a trial that is in between 5 and 30 days. And then after that, you're going to be forced to purchase the product. So. If you want to go for an approach that is not going to co cost you anything, um, Git, in this case, what we're doing today is going to be that approach. But Plastic SCM is great. I'm not, I'm not saying it's bad, right? <laughs> if you want to give Plastic SCM a try, I would suggest that you do it during a game jam, so a project that, that its duration is beneath 30 days. So if you want to give it a try, that's, I think that would be the best place to do so. Today we're using Git, the free alternative. Um, and the way that we do get Git is by heading over to uh, Google, type in Git Bash, and I'm downloading the Git SCM over here. So I do download it for Windows in my case. I have the standard installer. And after you go through all of that, you're gonna now going to have Git Bash. Git Bash being their command line application. So if I was to open this up, this is how it looks. And it's a standard command line. Um, as usual, so you have all the same stuff. If you want to know where you're at, you can do print working directory and here I am. So standard stuff as usual, I'm going to close this one up and we're going to go over to GitLab, which is the cloud services I use to host my project on. And once more, I would like to specify that this is free and I'm going to be walking you through how to create a new project. So if you have a GitLab account, then you can head over to the main page, create a new project. I like to create a blank project. So I'm going to click on that, give it a name. So that's my sticks video test naming convention here isn't too great so let's do this tutorial perfect gonna put it under my themes namespace i want this to be private so nobody can access it but the user and my group um and i'm not going to initialize it with the readme i'm just going to get create a um, empty clean project so this is the page you end up with over here and they give you command line instruction down here that you can use to push an existing folder, create in your repository, or push an existing Git. In our case, we are here. So you're going to need to set up your Git. I forgot about that, but you're going to need to set up your um, Git configs. You can do so by typing in these lines over here. Now, of course, change your name to your name, change your email to your email. But I would suggest that you go ahead and do that. So copy line one, paste copy line to paste. Uh, mine was already done in the past, so I don't technically need to do it again, but I'll do it again with you. There we go. So if you'd like to clear this, you can type in clear, and then we're going to head over to the existing folder. So now we've completed the global setup. We're trying to push an existing folder. For the purpose of this tutorial, I went ahead and I created a copy of my project that does not include any Git information. So this is just like a brand new project and I want to show you the structure of it because it's a bit different than usual. You have the, um, I have the artwork and also design folder. Those are top level thing for me to keep information about my project. This is not the Unity project itself. And if I want to, I'm also going to be creating 
the build folder in here in which I'll keep an archive, very small archive of build. Just to remind myself how the game was back back in time, basically. But I, would, I just want to show you that um, the Unity project is under source and this is where you get pretty much the usual stuff. Okay, so now our goal as per this uh, window over here, this uh, get instruction is to CD into the existing folder. So you're going to try and navigate to that folder. The way you do this is by figuring out where you are right now by doing PWD. I am in C user in 3K and my project is under dev sticks copy. So I'm going to do CD dev and I'm going to do the sticks copy over here. And I just realized that this is why you don't put space in there. Perfect. So right now I'm in my folder. As you can see, the path is this one. You can verify this is a good place by typing in print working directory and doing a directory so you can see what is inside of here. So that's that's all we need, right? We're at the right place. The next step is to do a git init. So git initialize. And here they, they have a additional argument that lets you rename the initial branch, which we're gonna follow along. We're gonna do that and say it's main. From that point on, the folder is now a git repository and you can see it over here because it says which branch you're on. Another way to verify, um, when a, a folder is source controlled by git, you also have a new folder being created called dot git and it's right in here. So it's a hidden folder. I guess you could view it by going here, hidden item. This is where the information about git is being stored. Now with that in mind, we could proceed to the following line. So git remote add origin. So this is link to this very specific project. Let's paste it. And technically it's done. And this is where we get to the point where we have to add the, um, the data. So everything, not the data, but we have to add all the changes that happen that we want to push to the project. So with that in mind, Here's where I would usually do git add and just send everything, but there is one caveat with that. If we were to send everything with no limitation, it would mean that we also send our logs, our library, and these things, um, we don't send them. We don't source control these things for the sole purpose that uh, it's generated by your own machine every time you open the project, and those are, those are basically auto-generated uh, files. So we don't want to source control them. We want to keep our project clean. So what we're going to do is we're going to include a git ignore. Git ignore works pretty much the same way as it sounds. It's, uh, it's going to ignore some file. Now I have it in the other project, so I'm just going to bring it over. You put that on the very top level where your git folder is, and we're going to have a look at what it looks like. Now, um, just a reminder that this file is under the description. If you want to just copy paste, go ahead and do that. But this is basically just a bunch of lines that are going to tell you what to ignore with Git. And those are rejects. So you can say anywhere, any folder that is called library or any folder that is called temp, any folder that actually any, any file that is a CS project, a Unity project, a solution, all of that is being ignored all the addressable as well, all the builds, all are ignored. And when I save this now, when I am to add things, it's going to ignore those files and they won't populate my, um, my source control. So it's gonna be important that you do that before you add things to your source control so you don't keep those files in there pretty much forever. So with that being said, we're pretty much ready to go to the other section, which is git add, git commit, and then git push git add basically means well first let's do a git status just to know where we at git status it sees that there is a git ignore artwork source and design folder to push that's exactly what i'm looking for so then i can do git add and dot dot stands for every changes but if you just wanted to add the artwork you could just do so like that and have a look now it's putting all the files that it found within artwork in the source control but we'd like to include the project as well and also the design folder so i'm going to do git add dot and it's included it's including pretty much everything that is uh in my project 
And if you have a look, you're not going to see anything from library. You're not going to see anything from logs. Those are all assets and dot meta files. So it's looking good thus far. All right. So once we're done, I'm going to clear the console. You don't have to do that, but just so we can go back at the top, let's do a git status. And as you can see, bunch of new files got added in the source control, pretty much all my files, right? <laughs> so we're ready. We're ready to do a commit. So we're going to say git commit. M is the message attached to your commit. In this case, it's the initial commit. Now this hasn't pushed your code and asset just yet to the source control, but it included them in a, a kind of package that is then ready to be pushed. So once that is completed, we can do the git push set upstream origin and the name of your branch. So in this case, we are using main. Once you do that, you can have a look, refresh your page. Might have done it a bit too early. Yep, I have. <laughs> so it's still it's still compressing the object, then it's going to push them over. And once this is completed, we can have a look at our project in the source control environment. And there we have it. It is completed. There is a new branch called main. And if we have a look at the project now within the source control page, the GitLab page, here it is. It's um, it's the project itself. East takes your tutorial. If we go under source, we do not see all the clutter that you usually, usually get. And yeah, so it looks pretty much good. And there it is. So for the next step, you don't need to follow this along, but for the next step, I'm going to show you how to get this project, how to do a modification to it, and also how to push again. So you can have your changes being applied to the project. So let's get into it. It's going to be fairly simple. Um, to get the project, we're going to go directly on the main page. So let me go back. So here we're going to clone this with either SSH or HTTPS. If you don't have a key, um, SSH key, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just go ahead and use the HTTPS. It's going to ask you to sign in, um, find the place where you'd like to have this, uh, source control. So here, what I will do is I will go back. I'll delete this one completely. Hopefully this works. And yeah, so it's deleted completely and I'm gonna just clone it in here. All we do is git clone and then paste in the URL that we've got earlier. Um, watch out, if you just um, if you just select something in the command line, it actually tries to copy it to your clipboard. So for example, if I am to select something like that, it's gonna copy it to clipboard. So just be aware of that when you're clicking in, <laughs> in here. But we've done a git clone with the URL in HTTPS. Now it did not ask me to sign in because I was already signed in, but for you, it's going to pop a window, ask you for your GitLab credentials, and then this will create a new project. Sticks video tutorial, the name of the project. And then inside of it, you're going to be able to see everything that is within the source control as soon as we're done receiving the object. So I'm going to pause the video for just a bit, and I'm going to be back in one second. And here we go. So these files just got updated. We see artwork, we see everything that goes within it, and then we see the Unity project itself. Um, it's still uploading some files. We're going to see more in just a bit. There we go. And this is how your project is now um, source control and how you clone the project. Next thing we'll do is we'll open up that project. So add the project from disk. We're going to go to the source of Sticks video tutorial, this one, add project, and then we're going to be opening it. When you open your project for the first time, um, everything here gets generated. So as we mentioned, the library, the log packages, all these things, and also the temp folder, those are all being generated now. So this is why we don't source control these version. I'm going to wait until everything is done um, and then come back to you on how to do a change. All right, so we're back in the project. And as you can see, uh, different layout, because this is usually saved in those files that we don't source control. So that's kind of good. So if you have two people working on this project, you're not overriding somebody else layout with your file, uh, which means that when you create your project initially, you're gonna have to do your layout. Um, totally fine. I'm not working on this, so I won't take the time to do that. But I'm just gonna show you how to do a quick modification. So I'm gonna go to my main scene. For example, let's take this scene. And I want to just make this file bigger over here. That's a big rock. Let's put it somewhere else. And I want to do save. So I've just did some modification to my project. What I'm going to do now is go back in GitLab, say everything is good. Everything is clean. I'm going to go into my, my folder because right now I'm not into it. Um, it's called sticks video tutorial. Now I'm inside of my folder here. I can do a git status to see what changed, And we can see that the default 
main scene has changed. I've deleted a couple of things and I also modified the default prefab object. Some of these operations I didn't do, but the, the editor scripts inside of my project actually do some of them. So that's completely normal. So what I can do is usually you, you tend to close Unity, but since we um, since we did we did add the temp folder to the ignore, it's it should work. But just to be safe, let's close the project. All we need to do at this point when we do a new push is to add those changes. So we see that it's a good changes. We can do git add dot, and then we do a git commit, um, and you include a message. So I'm going to say made the rock much bigger and once we're ready we just do git push we don't have to set the origin of this branch for the sole purpose that it's already done and it's going to keep that information we do git push and then if we go back on here as you can see we can see that the update happened just now and the file uh, the actual changes made the rot much bigger are here we can also click on it if you want to see what actually changed uh, there, were, there was four files that changed, 14 edition, 23 deletion, and here they are. So this is all the information from the changes I've made. Um, and same thing, if somebody wants to get those changes, they can hit clone, they clone with HTTPS or SSH, and that's pretty much it. And this is how we set up our project for source control. Now there are some additional um, concepts that you have to learn if you want to work with a team, such as how to pull their changes, how to work on different branch, but for the purpose of this tutorial, we are just using source control by ourselves so we can push our own development and get it whenever we want to. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Please drop a like and um, if you want, you can catch me live Saturday on Twitch. See you later. Cheers.